Good job, Dev Plazank. Now, as much as I love Mr. Juice World, man, I gotta say, like, 22 tracks, man, that's that's very, very crazy. I don't understand what he's got going on here. I don't care how sad you are, you know, how how much feelings you got invested in these tracks. There ain't nobody that can carry 22 tracks in this age right now, in this era, in this type of music scene. No one is carrying 22 tracks, I'm sorry. You know, you gotta combine greatest hits to get a 22 track consistent album. This man, Juice World, has 22 tracks, and I don't know if they're gonna be two minute tracks, I don't know if they're full fledged on tracks, but that's just a lot of juice, man. And I don't really like juice like that. You know, I, I like Henny and I like water. I mean, look, I ain't gonna do too much talking because we, we got enough video here. I don't even wanna waste too much time on the intro. So, like always, man, been fucking talking too much. We got 22 tracks from my guy Juice World. Hopefully it's not all sad. Y'all ready? <laughs> Shit, I feel bad because I didn't even tell y'all what the album was called. The album's called Death Race for Love. It looked like some twisted metal PlayStation 1 game cover type shit. I don't know what it, it do look like a PS1. Yeah. Y'all ever played Twisted Metal when you guys were all the cars and then you had a scary clown and you shoot people with the rockets? Like, I don't know if y'all y'all might be too young for that, but Twisted Metal was a very popular game back in the day for the PS1. And this this is exactly what it looks like. Track one, empty. Think I'm coming back home. Whoa, 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 whoa. Like a crossline. Juice first came onto the scene, you know, he had those two big tracks, um, All Girls Are The Same and Lucid Dreams, and I told y'all, me personally, I definitely love those two tracks. Y'all know me, man, I'm not scared of really getting my feelings out, I'll let y'all know, man, I like the sad boy hours, sometimes I just like to drive and I like listen to, you know, emotional music like that, just to get me, you know, just to keep me mentally stable, if y'all, if y'all want, we're gonna keep it just like that surface level type shit, but... I, I think that track right there, even though I wasn't really in tune with it, I mean, it definitely is a sound I can get used to for the remainder of the album. Because I do think that, I mean, Juice World started rapping these la this last year. You know, he did the, the mixtape with Future. Um, he had a couple tracks where he was rapping. I personally don't like rapping Juice World. I think that's not his lane at all. He needs to stay away from that. From time to time, he can do it. He just needs to stick to that punk rap emo shit that he's doing and he will be fine i just don't understand why you need to switch it up if it's not broke don't fix it but that first track right here it, def it definitely has the vibes i just wasn't really feeling that one man track two maze <laughs> Sometimes I be feeling like a lost boy. Shout out to goddamn Jaden Smith. I feel you on that juice. Okay. Okay. Hey, he can make me. He can make me nine more of those tracks right there, like that, like Maze. Shit, we got some fire here, man. Hold on, let me throw that on the playlist real quick. Y'all know how to. Hey, y'all know how the playlist work. If y'all want my playlist, someone get in the comment box below and let notify people how you get the playlist. I'm tired of explaining myself. All right. Dollar in a dream. But we gonna put this on the Beyond the Ponder right here, man. I, I, I feel where he coming from on that, man. You know, sometimes life is like a maze. I don't agree with it's a death race. Well, if you really look at the grand scheme, I guess you could say it's a death race. Like, you know, sooner or later we all die. And it's, I wouldn't say it's a race. We we're not racing to die. But, you know, we all get to, to a finish line however long our race lasts. Whether it's the Mario circuit or it's Peach Beach. You know what I'm saying? I, every, you know, it's three minute laps versus five minute laps. You know what I'm saying? Some people going to die at 60. Some people going to die at 40. Some people going to die at 80. You know, we just got different plans. So, but with, with Juice World, man, I do, I do agree with him. You know, down, you know, in life, 
you're going to have some bumps and that's when you know you you resort to drug use or alcohol abuse stuff like that everybody has their poison I, my poison is hennessy you know what i'm saying hennessy liquor I, I, I drink guinness that's all i really drink guinness hennessy heineken's from time to time that's all i really drink you know kind of gets you through that phase i feel like look i already said we're not looking at the b- bigger picture either with when it comes to juice world this man is going through some things and yes he he may be crying out or crying about it in his music and no one's really paying attention because we're all sad boys and we're just relating it to our own life but you need to look at juice world and see what he's saying before it's too late because this nigga is sad as shit I- i've been saying this man the man is sad as shit and people are just like we need more sad shit from juice world like i mean to an extent yes track three he motions he motions another life another day another chance to make it great i'm early to the money all the time so i can never be late motions going through motions muddy emotions going through motions is he saying muddy emotions not emotions emotions the fuck is that and they calling us go on the pain take these first to the mouth and then no i'm not a drug addict got it all Def, you definitely might be a drug addict. I mean, and I'm not saying I don't have anything against drug addicts because at the end of the day, like if you ask me, is Dev an alcoholic? To if I drink every Saturday, that is that is defined as an alcoholic. I don't think I'm an alcoholic though. I, don't, I think that's that's responsible drinking. Right here though, you're doing the drugs to catch your emotions and all that shit, and you know to deal with it all. I think that you are you need help personally, but I fuck with the music. Muddy emotions going through motions, muddy emotions. I had, a, I had a debate on Twitter, man. Uh, when I when it, when I first saw the track list, um, you know, him saying it'd be 22 tracks, and people were just like, "It's not gonna be all sad boys because of the first two singles he put out." And I ain't gonna lie to y'all right now, man. These first three tracks is looking like sad boy hours. Like we getting sad boy hours here. And I'm all for it. You know, I, these these last three tracks haven't been bad. My favorite one is the second track still, though. But Empty and Emotions weren't a bad, you know, it weren't a bad track. They just weren't my taste. Um, but, and then the next track right here, we boy got my dude Brent Fire. Bro, I, hey, if there's one body, oh, there's somebody that's being slept on, my nigga Brent. All right, Brent is like the new R&B, all right? Girl, you do damage to me. <laughs> Girl, I love it. Yeah, I love it. That, that. <laughs> Oh, you poison, baby. <laughs> that nigga Brent be killing that thing. <laughs> I be in the car just... <laughs> Dog. Anyways, man, but I'm definitely loving the sad shit, man. You know, the sad vibes. I'm just waiting for it to actually speed up, though, man, because 22 tracks of sad shit, I don't know if my heart can take it. Shout out to Mariah Carey. I don't know if my heart can really take it. Um, the next track is called Demons, though. Let's get into it. I ain't never do right. But and you can't tell me that nigga ain't got a smooth ass. Like, you heard that? Hold on, you ain't hear him come in. Hold on, let me put my sleeves up real quick. But you ain't hear him come in. Listen to this shit. Can't ever do right. Can't lose it. Fight. I'm already love. I think the demons are winning. <laughs> Scream soul, man. Like, you hear this track right here. It was an interlude. Brent Fayaz interlude. And I'm just, I didn't even hear Juice in that track. I, man, I appreciate you, Juice, man, because, uh, Juice, man. You know what? I just said, I appreciate you, Juice, man. And the first thing that came to mind was quarter brick, half a brick, half a pound. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyways, man, the original Juice, man. But anyways, you get to this track right here, man, and like, I feel like there's artists out there that, that that just aren't known, man. And it sucks to suck because there's so much great music out there. And the fact that it doesn't get put on blast because of what society chooses. You know what I'm saying? you The way you become famous nowadays is, is what society decides, all right? You know, you don't decide that you become famous. Society decides that because that's where your fan base comes from. You need the you need people to be relevant, all right? That, it sucks to suck. This is the industry you're in. You're in the entertainment industry. You're in the music industry. You need people to make you relevant. So with Brent Fayaz, he has 
a, a, a good fan base, but he just doesn't have enough people for him to put him over the top. Someone like Juice World Man will put him over the top with this track because people will listen to this album now and like, Brent Fayaz, who is this nigga? Gonna go back to that motherfucker, they gonna listen to that lovely man. I be man, hey, shout out to Brent, bro. That's that's the that's a fire track on here. Hold on, we gonna put that on a sad heartbreak dev. And we're gonna put that dev on them goddamn BM the panda. That shit fire, boy. Oh, listen to how this nigga came in, bro. I don't even know if I was snapping or if the beat was, or if the production was snapping. I, they just need to make me a, a snapper. Don't even need to sound up. I got you. I can snap for you. Oh my God, that track was fire. Track five, fast. That's clear as that. You heard what this nigga just said? I'm sad as shit. What else warning do you need? He said I'm sad as shit. Not even just sad. As shit. You got it, bro. We got to pay attention to the signs right now, man. Already with the first five tracks here, man, including the track Robbery. Um, y'all, y'all must be out your mind if you don't think this whole album is nothing but sadness and a cry for help. Very emotional, you know, um, just what Juice World was very popular first coming into the music scene. I don't care what none of you guys say, man, that rap shit was not it. That future tape was not it. I don't, I, I don't even remember one track from that future tape. You know, the future and, um, Juice World collab. We get to tracks like this right here, man. I'm, it's, it's starting to become clear now that this is the continuation on from uh, All Girls Are The Same, the Lucid Dreams, tracks like that, where he's just very, very, very in tune with his emotional self. And that's why I think a lot of us really fell in love with him in the first place, because we were all going through that, you know, or we've all been through that, what he was talking to, you know, All Girls Are The Same. I'm talking from a guy's standpoint. Or even Lucid Dreams, you know, everybody has been through a situation or similar situation like that. And I think that's where we're all just like, you know what, this is the sad, he's the sad boy ambassador. You know what I'm saying? We put all our feelings on Juice World. This whole album right here is already better than um, Good Riddance and Goodbye, whatever it was called. We got the, the two tracks that, that put him on, and then he just didn't continue on that wave. You know what I'm saying? Where he excelled, he just decided, let me experiment with other shit, which is not a problem. But I feel like for your debut project, you know, you got to do what got you there. And this is, I feel like this is his real project right here. Now 22 tracks, I don't, know, I don't think he's going to keep this up. But I'm just saying, though, these first five tracks are amazing, man. In terms of what he's trying to do here, like, Death Race for Love. If that don't sound like Kill Yourself type shit, that's, 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 real, that's real Kill Yourself type shit, bro. Track six, Hear Me Calling. Do you hear me calling? Do you hear me calling? You know what ain't no drama. Bullet! You know ain't no drama. Bullet! I just want you, my daughter. on. All right, man, y'all can't tell me right here, man. That shit gave me like little soca vibes. I don't know if y'all know that soca music. That's like little African shit they be doing. They be, pow, pow, pow. They be killing that shit. I don't know. They be, ah, ah. One foot in, ah, one foot out. Introduce yourself. My name is Devin. Yeah, and I am Devi. Yeah, they call me Miami. Yeah, and you can't stop me. My stomach, it hurt. But yeah, man, like that track right there, that was probably the most uplifting track we've had on this album so far. And even that was um, a little sad in its own way. So, like I said, man, we, we I expect 22, the rest of this album just to be a complete shit show. That's all I expect it to be. I don't expect nothing less, nothing more. Track seven is big. <laughs> Since day one, you know, I always keep it 100. I'm gonna let y'all know that is not it, all right, for me at least. It's true. 
it wasn't dumb stuff. I like the transition they had in there. I just I wasn't really feeling. It. I was kind of sitting there just like. So when is when are we gonna get to the exciting part? Track eight, robbery. Track eight is robbery. Man. I already listened to that shit. Uh, a lot of y'all, I had to listen to something going into the album, so that was the lead single. That you guys told me that was, and it was alright. It wasn't a bad track. Uh, y'all, a lot of y'all said it was the hype, a uh, hype track. That's what I was really confused about. And I was like, what, what type of hype shit y'all listening to? Because when I think about hype, I think about like Yin Yang Twin Salt Shaker, or, uh, you know, Lil John from the window to the wall type shit. Uh, y'all telling me this is a hype juice world, and this nigga, this, this sounds sad as shit. Just a little faster than what he's usually saying. You know, he's talking a little faster. That's all it really sounds like. You know, for the first eight. There was only one bad track on here so far, and that's big. So. Track nine, flaws and sins. There's a difference between I need you and I want you. Girl, I need you. Good sense. Let the conversations get a little deeper. Uh, tell me your darkest secrets. Shit, you wouldn't even tell Jesus. Uh, tell your darkest secrets. The shit I wouldn't even tell Jesus. Boy, you gotta be some type of... You gotta be some type of psychotic if you ain't gonna tell Jesus first. And you're going to tell somebody else that's not Jesus. I'm just letting you know, I'm, even if you're not religious, you know, you got to tell the higher ups first before you tell, because that means you're telling yourself. If you don't believe in Jesus or God, that means you're telling yourself at the end of the day before you're telling somebody else. I just, I mean, my thing is you love yourself before you love anything else. Sonic ad lib? Did I hear that? You know, we trying to stop. I'm overthinking it, man. But that track, another track right there where I'm just kind of just like, uh, I mean. Yeah. But no. It was a very polished track, man. I like the beat. Whoever was on the beat right there was really good. I mean, I like this message. It's just missing something, man. Next track we got is Track 10 Feeling. <laughs> Hey, I feel bad for the people that drive Honda Accords or the people that drive Ford Focuses. Like, because I feel like Juice World got something against y'all, personally. And I'm just saying. I, look, I live by the rule of mind my own business, and Honda Accord or Ford Focus is not my business. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying. Hey, for y'all that he took shots at, man, hey, my condolences, bro, because that nigga really don't like y'all. Um, I forget what what uh what instrument that is called. Um, you know, not the xylophone. The xylophone is when it's just the normal, like, guess what you want to call it? Bars right there. Um, it's the one where the actual you got the hollow underneath the um the xylophone, and it's called like the mellophone. Don't look, don't don't laugh at me, right? All right, it's called like the mellophone or something like that. I used to I used to mess with it back in the day, but you know that's what the instrument sound like right there, man. I definitely love that sound. Um, that track right there, I wasn't really feeling it at, like, you know, listening to the verses, but that hook is very catchy, man. The, the perk I be feeling, I'm feeling. Like, I, I fuck with that. Like, you know, we gotta put that on for you. We, we can add that one. That was a little cool track. Not to A, I am not gonna lie. For it being 10 tracks so far, we're almost halfway through this album. I'm actually shocked how, how not boring it is. Like, it's actually very fun. Juice World is doing his thing right now. This should have been his debut project. Track 11 is called... Syphilis. <laughs> the hell? That has to be the most dumpster track I heard in 2009. 
Hold the fuck on, man. I gotta tweet this shit. Oh my god. Can't even spell syphilis right. This shit crazy. How you spell this shit? Alright? SYP. <sighs> Holy shit, this shit was trash. How you make how you go making beautiful music for for, for ten straight tracks and you think that in what world do you think that that's okay? Then I'm gonna add a track. First of all, you title it syphilis, alright? This shit don't even sound good. Who the fuck wants to listen to some syphilis, all right? I don't know, like, hey, you try to listen to this track HIV, that shit fire, nigga. Like, well, who does that? Second of all, you get to the track and it's just like, you do the shit exactly what I told you don't do. And that's what, bro, if y'all like that track right there, please, go jump off the bridge, go take some Tide Paws to the face, take seven Tide Balls and a shot of Henny, please. Like, you just need to do something because this shit right here, trash. How you think that's fire? Please get in the comment box below and let me know what is fire about that track. The only thing that's fire about that track is the fucking syphilis, nigga. Syphilis fire on your dick. God damn, bro. I had to tweet that shit, get that shit off my chest, man. Let's let's continue on, man. We had a great... Look, the album is great so far. I'm not going to let one track, the worst track of 2019, shit on it for me. This is a great album. Track 12, Who Shot Cupid? Um, usually I'm a sucker for guitar play, but that track right there wasn't it. And I think I'm still fucked up with the syphilis. No pun intended, please. No. I, no. <laughs> the syphilis got me fucked up. <laughs> you know, that's that shit got me fucked up. It's like, shit crazy, bro. Track was straight dumpster. <laughs> Gooch sweat, goddamn ass hairs, bro. That shit was trash, bro. Holy shit. Track 13, Ring Ring, featuring Clever. Oh, man, I feel like we're going to start getting into a different side now. It had to happen. The syphilis then fucked the album. <laughs> I don't feel like coming to the phone today. Ring Ring. Clever guy is, but um, you know, I liked his I liked his verse at the end. The track at first I wasn't really feeling it, but then I, I remember, you know, I kind of got this little nostalgia in my head. Like, I don't know, back in the, you know, back in the day, rock, you know, grunge rock was popular, and then you know they started shifting into the new rock, and it was just like, you know, we had the the Blink 182s going on. And you know, if you think about it, man, I don't know what it is. I, I'm like I moved to Tampa, I tell you, I moved to Tampa. And I got a lot of white friends, you know what I'm saying? They got boats and shit. You know, we fish. I tell y'all that. Like, that's real life. It's real shit. That really does happen. But um, hanging out with my white friends, man, you know, it was just a different scene. You know, like, going to all the hood parties, obviously, you know, we played a Jeezy, you know, Thug Motivation 101s. We had the Carter plan, shit like that. Hot Boys. That was at the hood parties. But then I, I come to Tampa, you know, where I move on the outskirt of Tampa and I hang out with all these white people, you know. You know, I found a, a new attraction to, to white women. You know, like, it's just just your environment. You know, you just how you get, su what, suburban dyes. That's how we call it, suburban dyes. Y'all said that wasn't a word before. But I go into these parties, man, and they're playing, like, this Blink-182. And I never realized, man, like, you ever seen those movies, how you see those old movies, like American Pie and shit, and when they're playing Blink-182 at the parties? And it just gives this vibe. It gives this natural vibe. Everybody's kind of just having fun. I feel like this is, like, the new age Blink-182 song. I'm not, 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 not trying to disrespect the legends here, but I'm just saying, like, you know, you get that feel where you can see high school kids playing this at a party and, you know, kind of just having those fun times where somebody's doing a hand keg or handstand keg. You know, I don't know what y'all call it nowadays. Or, you know, people are just playing flip cup and the music's playing in the background. Everybody's celebrating. You know, shit like that. Vibes, you get vibes like that. You get really happy times. You remember that with the music playing in the background, which will probably be this new Juice World that has the guitar, has a feel of a rockish feel. And maybe I'm going too far with it, but I'm just telling you how I feel and how my experience is when I listen to rock music where I, I always was. And it was just kind of just like, damn, you know, like this is the shit. Like, 
I can't beat it. This is what the, this is what this music's for. Like Weezer was another uh, another good rock band that was just very uh, great for like those moments in movies. I don't know, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? For people that like love rock music and watch those movies, like it's just it gives you this feeling, man, of, of peace and fun.